Hey, in this video we are examining Santa Claus LED from a structural, aerodynamic, systems and operational point of view. So Santa Claus LED is a very peculiar aircraft. First, you can notice that it is split into main section. This section here on front seems to be a propulsion section and this one seems to host the payload of the aircraft. It is also so interesting to notice that the vehicle is not rigid, it is articulate in this point, which is a very peculiar configuration which may easily lead to yaw instabilities. I don't know how this is resolved on the Santa Claus sled. It is possible that the driver is actually acting as a fly-by-wire system, is actually correcting the instability manually, but it's difficult to say because as you can see here is pretty much distracted all the time. In terms of propulsion, the reindeer's legs seems not to be particularly important. This is probably a side effect of some type of propulsion. We don't know exactly uh, how it works. It is possible that from this side of the reindeers, there is a small nozzle uh, that ejects a stream of gases, but this kind of configuration, it doesn't seem great. The external flow is probably under expanded. And there are also practical issues uh, because, uh, yeah, okay, these, apart from the two reindeers in front, the others are actually working within the stream of the gases. So, yeah, again, it's not an ideal configuration. In terms of lift, we don't see any real lifting surface. The only possibility is that the back side of the aircraft actually assumes in flight an attitude with an angle of attack and this is going to produce some lift, maybe. However, the flow will probably be completely separated here. So the pressure here will be probably higher than and below, so it will be P1 greater than P2, creating an, a net downward force. But we can discount some dynamic effect that overall is actually producing lift. From an operational point of view, we can see that every reindeer has some antennas, some specific antennas. The Again, the antennas configuration is quite particular. Considering the overall size, they probably work in um, X-band or something like that are uh, they do if they are radars if they are active antennas if they are active sensors um, the the frequency should be probably quite high it is possible that this harness here on the side which is uh, also has a structural function that is articulating the two sections could be used as an antenna to receive a longer wavelength uh, radiation however again we don't see any bay or any sign that there is any sort of uh, signal processing capability on board of the vehicle. For electro-optics, well, obviously every reindeer has its own sight, but we don't know how much intelligence is into those sensor. However, it seems that the pilot has some uh, opt form of sensor in front of his eyes. It uh, could be everything, could be an infrared sensor, could be a sort of a infrared search and track. We'd, we'd being mounted on the head of the driver that is probably working uh, 360 degrees around the aircraft. So the back section of the sled is hosting the payload, which seems to be this one here, uh, which is also transported externally. It is not under slang as normally is. It is above. If it should be delivered downwards, uh, it is probably complicated. In fact, we have uh, unconfirmed reports that the driver sort of stops the sled to deliver the payload, um, which makes sense because we see no targeting pods. And in this uh, specific case, this type of payload is addressed specifically to very difficult targets, to individual homes, to individual people. So yes, uh, high 
precision is necessary, but it seems that this is obtained not by using any form of technology, but just by personally delivering the payload. It's again is a sort of a strange thing, but this entire setup is unconventional, so yeah, it's possible. However, we have no news about the warhead. Um, we again we have unconfirmed reports that sometimes coal is delivered, but otherwise we we don't know. We simply don't know. Again, in terms of rudder cross section, this is uh, pretty terrible. In fact, here we have some flat surfaces or nearly flat surfaces. The payload shows a lot of 90 degrees angles that reflect radar radiation very well. So I believe it's not surprising that the NORAD can track the sled every year. This was a short analysis of Santa Claus LED. I hope you have enjoyed it. And before leaving, I want to say Merry Christmas to all those who celebrate Christmas and all the best to all those who don't. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.